वेलकम टू द कोर्स बिजनेस एनालिटिक्स एंड डेटा माइनिंग मॉडलिंग यूजिंग आर सो इन प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी स्टार्टेड अवर डिस्कशन ऑन आर्टिफिशियल न्यूरल नेटवर्क सो विल कंटिन्यू दैट सो टिल नाउ वी हैव बीन वी हैव बीन एबल टू डिस्कस द न्यूरल नेटवर्क आर्किटेक्चर द बैकग्राउंड मल्टी लेयर फीड फॉरवर्ड नेटवर्क एंड स्पेसिफिक डिटेल्स अबाउट कंप्यूटेशन दैट आर इन्वॉल्व इन इनपुट लेयर हिडन लेयर्स एंड आउटपुट लेयर Uh, now what we'll do uh, uh, the uh, uh, this particular process uh, that uh, is uh, the computations that are involved in different layers we'll go through uh, some of those things uh, using an example using an exercise in r so uh, let's open r studio and the particular example this is a hypothetical one uh, so this example that we are going to use is about uh, a particular uh cheese combination so uh, in in a particular cheese we have uh, these scores fat score and salt score so this uh, combination of uh, uh, is going to be tested by uh, is has been tested by expert and uh, they uh, indicate uh, whether that particular fat uh, score and salt score combination uh, that particular fat and salt uh, combination is going to be is accepted or not so uh, we have fat scores for every uh, such uh, uh, experiment and the salt score and whether that was accepted or not so you can see we have just uh, you know, six observations so uh, six observation in each of these vectors fat score salt score and acceptance and uh, this can be used to uh, this is a small example that uh, we are going to use to uh, understand certain computations uh, that we discussed in the previous lectures so let's create uh, uh, first variable fat score so you can see fat score in the environment section we can see six observations numeric uh, vector and then let's compute the salt score so again we can see six observations numeric vector and then the acceptance so you can see salt score uh, the acceptance six values 100011 so corresponding to each uh, combination of fat and salt we have uh, uh, a value for acceptance whether that was accepted or rejected now uh, the typical uh, example that uh, the the specific example that we are going to follow is uh, going to be based on this neural network structure so input layer uh, will have two nodes so nodes 1 and 2 uh, region being we have uh, uh, two uh, Uh, predictors here fat score and salt score and hidden layers will have just one hidden layer with three nodes so uh, that is one more than the number of predictors uh, so p plus one uh, in you know, nodes in hidden layer so they are going to be denoted by 3 4 and 5 then we have output layer of one node so that would be representing because we have a you know binary variable here uh, acceptance that is uh, either one or zero so uh, one node for that so that is denoted by node number 6 so if we want to draw the neural network uh, architecture that we have decided for this small exercise is this one so node 1 and 2 so node 1 and 2 so that is uh, the values will come from uh, uh, this particular this particular predictor as we saw in our uh, r environment and then we have salt score and then uh, these uh, so this is input layer so this is input layer now as we have discussed uh, in previous lecture that uh, uh, input layer nodes all uh, all the uh, input layer nodes uh, they are going to provide input values to the next layer that is the first hidden layer so we had these predictors p value of p is 2 so typically uh, around the number of predictors that uh, we have uh, the same number of nodes we have input layer as we discussed and around the same number uh, we have the number of nodes in the uh, hidden layer so here we have just one hidden layer and the number of nodes that we are taking are p plus 1 that is here in this case 3 so this is node number 3 4 and 
Now, as we talked about that uh, from each node in the input layer, uh, we'll have an arrow. So, this will provide a feed to this node as well as this node as well as this node. Similarly, from second, uh, you know, from second node that is corresponding to the second predictor sortlist score, we'll be providing feed to all three. hidden layer nodes. So, you can see uh, two arrows because we had two predictors, two arrows uh, coming to uh, this particular, this particular uh, you know all the nodes of two arrows arriving at uh, connecting to all the nodes in the hidden layer. Then as we discussed uh, that we will have uh, one node in the output layer. So, this is our output layer. And uh, this is uh, the only hidden layer that we have. So, all the nodes in the header layer uh, are going to be connected uh, to the uh, output layer node, the single output layer node that we have. So, uh, uh, so they would be providing feed to the uh, output layer, single output layer node that we have. This is why we have just one node here. So, this is actually corresponding to the output uh, variable that we have outcome variable uh, which is uh, which is binary variable in this case which is binary variable in this case which is uh, acceptance so the feeds from all the hidden layer nodes would be provided would be forwarded to this single output layer node so, this is uh, our typical neural network. Uh, we will also have uh, bias values on each uh, of the hidden layer nodes and output layer nodes. So, these are bias value. Uh, so, we will also have them. So, each of uh, these nodes will have uh, corresponding weights, right. So, we will have so these are bias values thetas and we will have weights for all the connected arrows. So, this is the uh, typical neural network architecture that we are going to use for this example. Uh, so, uh, let us proceed. So, you can see uh, first step is initialization. So, uh, as you can see uh, here in the comment that uh, uh, the uh, theta and uh, wij initialization that we have to perform uh, first. So, this particular character this was uh, uh, actually theta. However, uh, this uh, probably this font is not supported uh, some problem here. So, this is being uh, depicted by some other character, uh, but uh, this is uh, what we are talking about is the initialization of bias values that is thetas and weights. Uh, so, that is the tip tree that is uh, first step. So, uh, bias values uh, if we look at uh, uh, this particular function that we are using here is the matrix. So, we will compute a matrix uh, of uh, bias values. And the first argument is of course, the data. So, we are using a run if uh, function to generate these uh, uh, random uh, numbers. Uh, so, uh, we are generating four random numbers. If we look at that, uh, we have three uh, nodes in the hidden layer and one node in the output layer. So, we have uh, four values, we will have four bias values and therefore, uh, I am generating four, uh, four random numbers here. And you can see the range of these numbers is uh, minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5. So, we will have that number of column is 1. So, that is going to be representing all uh, uh, have all bias values. Dimension names uh, are, are 4, uh, 3, 4, 5, 6 that is corresponding to node numbers. 3, 4, 5, 6 for each of these node uh, will have the row number and uh, then uh, uh, we will have the four values corresponding values bias values. So, let us compute this. So, you can see here corresponding to uh, node number 3, 4, 5, 6 which is which are being represented by row number here 3, 4, 5, 6 we have uh, randomly initialized uh, uh, bias values uh, which are from uh, which range between minus 0 0.5 to 0.5. Now, uh, let us move forward to next step that is weights. So, first weights uh, uh, of arrows which are connecting input layer nodes to 
hidden layer node the single hidden layer node that we have so again here you would see that uh, we have from we have two uh, input layer nodes and uh, three uh, hidden layer nodes so that means we will have two into three six uh, connecting arrows so therefore we will have to uh, randomly initialize six values six of the weights first so again same range six values same range and we will have uh, three columns uh, three columns here uh, corresponding to three nodes in the hidden layer nodes and we will have two rows corresponding to uh, two nodes uh, in the uh, input layer so as you can see in the dimension names you can see first is for row names uh, first uh, element is for row names first vector the second vector in this list is for uh, column names so one and two two nodes for input layer uh, two uh, and then three nodes in the hidden layer so in this fashion uh, we'll generate the randomly initialize the weights so let's compute these values you can see here in the output so row number correspond to uh, input layer nodes that are one and two and the uh, column names uh, correspond to hidden layer nodes that are uh, three and node number three four and five and uh, you can see the values uh, randomly initialized values in the range minus 0 0.5 to 0.5 then let's move to next step that is uh, initializing uh, uh, weight values uh, that are that are there for the connections between hidden layer nodes to output uh, layer nodes so we have three uh, uh, nodes in the hidden layer and just single hidden layer that we have and just single node in the output layer so we have three connecting rows three into one three connecting arrows and therefore three weights we will have to initialize same you can see in this particular matrix uh, uh, function three values will be in the same range one column uh, that is because we have just one node in the output layer so you can see the dimension names or row names uh, are uh, corresponding to the hidden layer nodes that is three four five and the column name is corresponding to the output layer node that is six here so let's compute this outcome matrix and you can see in the output that row numbers three four five corresponding to layer nodes and the column name is six so that is corresponding to out single output layer node that we have and these are the random initialized values so once the random initialization has happened for all these w's and uh, thetas uh, then uh, for a particular observation uh, we can uh, start uh, certain computations uh, so let us uh, look at uh, the first record that we have so first record that we have you can have a look in the environment section as well you can see fat score first value is uh, 0.2 and solid score first value is 0.9 so uh, first record we have fat, uh, fat score as uh, uh, 0.2 and solid score as 0.9 uh, so now we will do certain computation so this is one variable output where we are going to com uh, store the output value values so any output values that are going to be processed uh, after applying transfer function they are going to be stored in this particular variable so let us initialize this nice null now because this is for first observation k is 1 that is for first observation that is nothing but to access the uh, vectors of fat score and uh, solid score because the first value uh, that we are taking here so let us initialize this you now uh, the loop so this in the loop runs from the uh, uh, you know all the all number of uh, bias values uh, and uh, number of bi bias values uh, and one less than the number of bias values uh, so that is uh, we can see that uh, that this is especially for the hidden layer nodes so we have three hidden layer nodes as you can see so uh, this is how we can uh, compute this and now uh, you can see the expression bias uh, that expression that we saw in the slide so let us again have a look at that expression uh, this uh, we uh, saw in a previous lecture so you can see this is what we want to compute we want to compute a weighted value so you can see uh, theta value uh, the bias value plus uh, summation over all the predictors uh, values the weighted average of uh, uh, all the predictors values so uh, we can see that bias value is being accessed the bias value that we had initialized uh, here right uh, starting from uh, first value and then uh, we can see weights 
uh, that, uh, that we have initialized. You can see that uh, bias, this was matrix, first column, first value, right, weights, again, uh, this was uh, a matrix, weights between input layer to hidden layer, and you can see uh, the, uh, you know, first row, and uh, then uh, the, uh, we are going to, through the i value is going to be 1 in the first iteration, so that is first column, then second column. So, you would see uh, in the output itself, uh, if we go above uh, here, and the bias values and then the weights, ih, you can see uh, the first column is corresponding to uh, node number 3, second column is corresponding to node, uh, node number 4 and uh, third column is corresponding to node number 5. So, you can see these column numbers are changing, however, we are dealing with the, uh, you know, uh, you know, same row. You can see row number 1 and here and for next one uh, row number 2. So, uh, uh, first uh, arrow this is going to be the uh, weight and then fat score and then uh, the uh, second arrow this is the weight uh, and uh, for the same column and this is going to be uh, computed. So, this expression is essentially being computed using this particular code. And then the output values, you can see the uh, logistic function here, 1 divided by 1 plus exponential of minus x. So, uh, we have computed the uh, logit value, the logistic function and uh, for all the uh, nodes, all the hidden layer nodes, this would be computed. So, let us run this loop. Now, once this is uh, computed, uh, then we have one more output value to be computed that is for corresponding to the output layer node. So, uh, let us uh, increase uh, increment the i value counter and uh, j also let us uh, initialize this. Now, you can see this particular uh, code is for the output uh, layer node bias value. Uh, you can see here uh, the bias values this was i we have already incremented. So, therefore, the last uh, bias value is going to be used here uh, that is corresponding to the output layer node then weight. Uh, this is between uh, hidden and output layer. So, the corresponding weight is being uh, accessed uh, uh, from that matrix that we have and then uh, that same expression, the same expression that we have uh, here is being uh, evaluated here. So, let us compute this. Now, again we are using uh, a logistic function to compute the value for uh, the uh, single output layer node. So, uh, now uh, all the values output values uh, have already been computed and uh, you can also see when we computed the uh, output value for the uh, uh, out single output layer node, the input values were the output of uh, hidden layer. You can see output 1 and output 2, output 3. Uh, in the loop, you can see that input values were coming from input layer node, fat score here and sort score here. So, these were the two nodes uh, in the input layer and uh, these values were being used. When we look at the, uh, you know, output uh, layer node, you can see the input values are coming, uh, uh, are being used as the, the what uh, uh, output values of hidden layer are being, are becoming the input values for the output layer and output 1 and output 2 and output 3 can be clearly seen here. And that is how we compute output for the uh, output layer node. And once we have that value, so uh, let us look at this value output 4. So, the value that has been computed comes out to be 0.4918236. Now, as we uh, know that uh, the acceptance variable that uh, outcome variable that we have that is essentially a binary variable 0 and 1 whether that particular combination was accepted uh, or not. So, uh, this value, uh, this score can be used, uh, you know, compared with a cutoff score that is we can take 0 0.5 as the cutoff score and it can be compared to uh, classify this observation. For example, uh, this is uh, the uh, code that we are using. So, if else, if this output value is greater than 0 0.5, then classify it at, at 1, that means accepted, otherwise 0. So, we can compute this value. So, this comes out to be 0 because the value is 0 0.49, quite close to 0 0.5, uh, but uh, less than that. So, this has been classified as uh, 0, however, quite close. Uh, uh, if you look at the actual value acceptance, it was 1. So, the value that was computed uh, uh, here is 0 0.49. So, there is still some 
and it was still not classified as uh, you know class 1. So therefore, what we can understand is uh, more iterations are to be performed. This uh, a neural network that we have, this, is what, this was the first iteration that we had done. So therefore, more iteration have to be performed for us to be able to have the final model which will have higher accuracy, higher classification accuracy. So this, this was just first iteration. So more iteration, uh, the network will learn something more uh, from the data and then probably the performance will improve the, uh, the actual uh, uh, you know, uh, results about to start matching the actual values. So let us go back to our discussion. So as you can see uh, whatever uh, discussion that we had in previous lecture, the computations uh, uh, that uh, we talked about in previous lecture, this particular expression as well. Uh, so that uh, we now saw uh, how it are going to be performed, uh, uh, you know, uh, in in our environment, our studio environment. <coughs> now let's uh, talk about the next important point here. Uh, we talked about in previous lecture that linear and logistic regression can be treated as a special cases of uh, neural network. How uh, how uh, how is that? Uh, how can that uh, happen? So let us uh, discuss. So uh, let us consider a neural network with single output node and uh, no hidden layers and uh, that would actually approximate the linear and logistic uh, uh, regression models. Right? So as we talked about that expression uh, that we use, uh, the expression that we use uh, for, uh, for uh, weighing the inputs here, right? the expression that we used here this theta plus summation of w and xi predictor values this is quite similar to what we have in uh, linear regression the uh, beta plus uh, you know beta 0 plus uh, here we have summation beta and x this is quite similar to what we have in uh, linear regression so therefore uh, in uh, in that sense we can try and approximate uh, we can try and approximate uh, linear regression as a special case of neural network. What we will do? Uh, we will have 0 hidden layers. So, let us uh, 0 hidden layers, single output node that we already have. So, if the, the same diagram we want to convert into a linear uh, regression, this is what we can probably do. So, if we remove the hidden layer, if we remove the hidden layer, the input uh, layer nodes are going to be uh, directly connected uh, with the output layer node, right? Uh, directly going to be connected with the output layer node, and uh, if we are not using, if we are using uh, transfer function, so these arrows will also change. This will also go. So these arrows will also change. So uh, this will become. Uh, there will be a feed to this from this node and there is going to be a feed to this. Let us remove some of these things. So this is what we will have and uh, this is uh, theta, this is going to be, so there are going to be weights. So we have two predictors and uh, uh, one output variable and if you look at uh, now there is similarity transfer function of g is uh, something like this uh, then uh, the input values that we receive the same are going to be uh, transferred here and uh, therefore this is uh, what we will have. Uh, so this will approximate uh, what we talked about, this will approximate the linear regression. So as we can see in the slide as well, if a linear transfer function gx uh, uh, equal to bx is used, so that means uh, the input values that we receive from predictors, the same input values is, are going to be fed to the output layer node. There are no hidden layer nodes. Uh, then uh, the formulation is going to be equivalent to that of uh, linear, linear regression. So you can see these formulations. So this formulation will become equivalent to the formulation that we have in linear regression. However, uh, the estimation method, how do we estimate, uh, how you know the, uh, we estimate the betas in linear regression that is typically done using least square that is different uh, in case of neural network. Neural network we apply back propagation algorithm 
to estimate theta, uh, thetas and uh, w. So, theta and w's values are estimated using back propagation algorithm neural network. However, in uh, linear regression, these betas are estimated uh, using least square. So, estimation method is different, otherwise, uh, we can approximate the linear regression uh, using neural network. So, therefore, we can say that uh, in a way uh, linear regression or special cases of uh, neural network. The similar uh, thing, uh, similar uh, conceptualization uh, we can do for logistic regression as well. Suppose this uh, transfer function is logistic function, if this transfer function is logistic function, then you would see that uh, you would see that uh, the um, uh, the uh, the uh, neural network uh, with zero hidden layer nodes, zero hidden layers would again approximate the logistic regression equation. So you can see, uh, as in the slide, probability of uh, a particular record uh, belonging to class one, and uh, this is uh, you know there also in logistic regression also we use this uh, logistic response function, and uh, we will have uh, expression like this uh, here. So, that will uh, so this will uh, actually approximate this will actually approximate uh, the logistic regression. So, if the, fo the formulation is equivalent to what we have uh, in logistic regression equation. However, uh, just like linear regression, the estimation method is different uh, in logistic regression that is maximum likelihood method that is typically used in logistic and in neural network as uh, I talked about typically uh, back propagation is used. So, uh, linear and logistic regression they both can be conceptualized as a special cases of neural network. Let us move forward. So, some more important points uh, with respect to artificial neural network. Uh, so, one is uh, normalization. Typically, uh, the amount of uh, iterations uh, that uh, uh, are performed in a neural network. Uh, depending on the number of observations and the you know depending on the learning rates and other things that we'll discuss uh, later on. So depending on that, uh, uh, quite you know number of computations, uh, number of computations or computational intensity of a artificial uh, neural network could be quite high. So therefore, to uh, boost the performance, uh, to get the conversion uh, convergence uh, in neural network and to also get better performance, it is generally recommended uh, that all the variables should be in the scale of GO1. So, all the predictors, so we would like to have all the predictors in this scale 0 to 1. So, normalization, so we would be required to perform normalization, uh, so that uh, all the variables are in that scale. So, for uh, numeric variables as you can see in the slide. Uh, the normalized variable v norm could be computed in this fashion v minus uh, minimum of v divided by max v minus win v. So, uh, this will give us a, a normalized variable uh, which will have uh, values in this particular range 0 to 1. So, this is for numeric variables. If we talk about the uh, binary variables, uh, the categorical variable with two classes. Uh, so, uh, typically uh, there is not much that we need to do, if we create dummy variables, so they will anyway have uh, take values, uh, set of values is going to be 0 and 1. So, either 0 or 1 values is going to be taken for all the observations. So, binary variable will work just fine uh, irrespective of whether they are ordinal or nominal. Uh, so, uh, uh, so uh, binary variables are going to be ok with this range, this normalization. We talk about the nominal uh, variables with uh, greater than two classes, then uh, we can uh, create m minus so one dummy variables. And because these are dummy variables, uh, variables again they will have this uh, set of values 0 and 1. So, the values could would are going to be either 0 or 1. So, that is also ok. Now, uh, when we talk about the ordinal variables, uh, ordinal variables with m classes where m is greater than 2, then we have to think about uh, what can be done. So, typically uh, the values can be mapped to uh, uh, this particular set of values, so 0, uh, comma 1 divided by m minus 1. Uh, so, if there are m classes, so we are dividing 1 by m minus 1, then 2 divided by m minus 1, then up to m minus 2 divided by m minus 1 and 1. So, uh, so uh, this is uh, 
to map the values. So, if there are, uh, let us say, if there are four classes, if we have an ordinal variable. with four classes. So, we would like to as uh, discussed in slide. So, you would see that we would like to have in this fashion the values as, as, as mentioned in the slide. Now, for four classes the scenario would be 0, 1 divided by 3, 2 divided by 3 and then 1. So, these uh, could be the four values uh, for the uh, ordinal classes. Now, the values that could be there in the variable, they will have to map to these four values, right. And uh, we have to uh, change the variable type as ordinal and have these values. So, the scale will again be 0 to 1 and uh, since this is going to be anyway ordinal, ordinal variable, so, uh, so the values are also going to be in this range and uh, it can be used here. So, uh, these transformations uh, can be performed or are actually recommended for in a network to achieve either the conversion of the network, conversion of the model or to even uh, improve the performance. Uh, there are few more uh, considerations, uh, uh, few more discussions point about artificial neural network that we will uh, discuss in the uh, next lecture. So, we will stop here. Thank you.